Welcome to sunny Borås. <laughs> Last year we did MCH. Um, we had this sign that said Understorp. And sadly, when we were packing down the sign at this extremely uh, bad trip, we broke the entire sign. So it's basically rest in peace at this point. So last time we did this, we used red LED wire that we've kind of pulled through the sign, right? So we drilled all the holes for the letters and we pulled it in and we pulled it up and we used small screws and fishing wire to tie it into place. And it looked like a mess. So this time around, we're instead going to use segments of LED wire that we make ourselves, right? So we use this new LED strips that's 12 volt instead of five volt. I can't remember the name. Um, there's a lot to do as we, you know, we bought the tube separately and we did buy the RGB LED separately and we're gonna to try to fuse this together. I for sure hope they sent the right one because otherwise it's gonna be a nightmare. Yeah, that's gonna be good. Thank you. <laughs> Falcon Bayers, 3,5 cent. Maybe we went a bit overboard with the uh, PSUs. These are the massive. <laughs> this is so much power. Do you think it's gonna be enough? This is definitely gonna be enough. <laughs> Remember before when I said it would suck if they sent us the wrong dimension of the tube that we would put the LED strips into? Well, they did. It took us about an hour or two to figure it out, but we eventually came to the conclusion that they must have sent us the wrong shapes because we looked at the images and they just didn't look the same. The so problem the <laughs> to we're facing is that we, we don't really know how to get the LED strip into these tubes. Or I guess the LED strip is going into this tube and it looks really, really nice, but there's too much friction when we try to pull it through, so we can't get the strip into the tube, which you probably should have thought of before, but... Apart from the fishing wire and all the other problems with the sign, the main problem was that it was actually too short to cover the entire 3x3 three three tent that we have. So we knew if we were making a new one, it needs to be at least 3 meters wide. Problem though is that the plywood sheets that you can buy in regular hardware stores are not 3 meters wide. So we sort of knew instantly that we had to be able to divide this sign if we built a new one. So we mapped out sort of like how the new one would look in Fusion 360 and we sort of split it here, right? So we could split it in half and then have a hinge between. But the real problem was that how do we make the letters nice, right? Because the other ones we made on freehand, they look terrible. So after some thinking, we came up with this concept that on the small Prusa Mini that we had available in Sweden, we printed these sort of like holders, these guides in which we could place the LED tube, right? That will hold it in place. And the nice thing is that we could design in such a way that the plastic things we were printing would first of all be able to be screwed in directly into the, uh, the board. But second of all, they would have a slight taper angle, so they would clamp the LED tubes. We wouldn't need to use any glue. We wouldn't need to use any sort of like fastening as the natural friction from the rubber meeting the plastic, especially 3D printed plastic, would be enough to hold these in place. I'm at the uh, local uh, shop trying to find this plywood. We did find uh, the board, but they had it in black, so we don't have to paint it, which is like it's a good thing. Let's see what we what we got in here. That's uh, what we in Sweden refer to as an a blue buck. Getting this battery. This is one of the most important parts of building these things. Is to have a blowback of grease by. So it's about six hours later. We're still trying to figure this out. Yeah, I don't know how much Vaseline we've used. Iteration number five, I think. Yeah. Four. Shipped these too small to us. So that's like the problem. And we're trying to print this jig, and the jig we've sold it on some copper wire, and then we're just like pulling it through. Here you have a bunch of yeah, you, burrs. You want the. Ugh. What's that burst from? I believe it's from the yeah, Galar Gold. Ah, oof. While they are doing that, uh, we are composing the sign. So we've just put these on, uh, this thing on, like it's now on the rails. We're making the second one. That's where we're at right now. One step at a time. Oh, 
end up cutting up the thing to get the shit in, but now we need to get glue to put it back together. So we're gonna go to uh, the Swedish store Bil Tema and acquire these shits. Core theme. Core theme, that's actually the direct translation of that shit. We bought this uh, Bil Tema epoxy and we're currently trying to figure out what to do with this epoxy. Uh, uh, I mean, we can just mix and see what happens, I guess. Yeah. You wanna mix in some Vaseline as well? To do um, measure. This is doomed to fail, but we will see. I mean, it doesn't look that bad. It doesn't really get down there. Bits and butts. We actually had to redo the S and the uh, D. Because the <laughs> we used so much Vaseline that the epoxy glue didn't actually stick to anything, which in hindsight is fucking obvious, but when we did it, I don't know what we were thinking. It didn't work out, but it used this uh, silicone lubricant that you get apparently, you're not supposed to use inside without ventilation because you get shit in your head, which we figured out after we having used a lot of it. So six hours later, we were like, what is going on? But now we ventilated, we had a couple of obro from the Bobak, and we actually did them and it worked. So we are now back in business. It works. That looks so good. That looks so good. It's so... You can't see it in the individual LEDs, which is so nice. Well, in the process of measuring this out now, we've 3D printed these small uh, brackets for the um, tube, and we've measured it out with, or sketched their Infusion 360, and we've just like kind of dotted so we can paint it out and now we're about to screw this in as you can see. After three days of struggling with this, we finally had some smooth sailing for ourselves. Mounting these brackets turned out to be super easy and once we actually attached the tube, the friction idea that we had actually worked great. It just stuck immediately. It must be nice to be so here, so. Oh, God, it's really nice. Oh, God, it's really nice. Look at this, compare to the old sign, it's just, this is just what you want, right? It's crisp. From the distance, this is going to look absolutely terrific. Everyone has these things that you, you do once in a while, and every time you do it, you're like, this is the absolute worst. Why am I doing this? For some reason, a year later, they're like, oh, you know, that was easy, I'll do it again. And then you sit here at 1 a.m. and you're like, I hate soldering. These strips, it's the worst, especially the 144. <laughs> like this is horrible. It's just horrible. So here I am again, alone in the garage where I grew up, just sitting and just soldering LEDs once more. One, one more time with feeling, I guess is what they say. When times are tough and rough, so the one thing to do. <laughs> Hell yeah, fucking buy your shit. We're actually done with the A and D right now. Got it to work after some nightmare soldering, but this looks really, really good. You can see here. So this is the first part of the strip, and the first part of the segments. It looks really good. The lines are clean, everything looks nice. I'm really happy about how this is turning out so far. 
and butts. It's finally <laughs> soldered it together. Oh god, the entire thing is done. Oh, I'm so incredibly tired of this that I don't think I will actually finish all of this here in Borås. I think I need another pair of soldering hands to do this because it's so annoying to do this yourself. Fold them together, but maybe we can do it like if we put them standing, maybe. Yeah, that must be much better. Yeah, and then we'll have them just back to back. Uh, oh, it's stuck. Like this. One year has passed since last time, and then sadly, I'm not more intelligent apparently because I'm sitting here again in the same car that broke last time, and I just opened the 3.5% Preeps blower in the car. And we just came down the strip. If you've never been down the strip, down the strip is a. Magnificent, magnificent city that has absolutely nothing. This is actually everything we're bringing into CCC camp. I have no idea how. Oh my god. All of this is gonna so fit. Much. How are we gonna fit this? We have everything plywood, tent, sleeping bag, the rack, some nice some French carne. liquor, Italian liquor. Uh, grappa. Who is that? That's Joran Persson, ah. the former uh, Swedish prime minister. Ah, he's a. Uh... He's a gentleman for sure. Okay, let's just put it down there. This is perfect. And then let's start. Let's make the S. Once more with feeling. Pianist. We're getting closer, almost a bit of time. Finally made the S, D, T, the O. Now we're making the R, and then we're making the P, and that's it. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's try and see if it works. See if it works. I can get these connectors. Have you fucked them up already? Yay! That works. Okay, let's try that one. Put these in. No, we forgot the uh, screws on them. Day one of the final build of the sign done. We got a lot done. Believe it or not, I don't even believe it. We are done with the second part of the sign. And that works and all the connections are nice and it looks clean. And now we're working on connecting the electronics of the first part of the sign. But it's almost 12 and we want to get to bed. So we're going to... Sort of end it here, but there will be more tomorrow, that's for sure. A review for today. How do you that feel? Was, uh, quite a long shift. My back hurts. What was the most frustrating part about today? Probably in the end when you're uh, kind of tired, getting things mixed up. Did I connect this one? Is the ground connected to ground? And you just feel like I'm gonna mess up soon. Wait, are you telling me you didn't clean the lines? <laughs> no, we did not clean the lines. But you never clean the lines. <laughs> exactly. Oh God. We are out of blue box. Oh no. What do you have in here? Have oh god, there's a lot of blue box in here. Some teal. Oh yeah. Some more teal. Mm. Teal. Mm. Two, uh, more teal. <laughs> and the last one. Mm. For electronics this time around, we decided to keep it simple and use VLED with an off-the-shelf board that Bong69 sells on Tindy. It comes with eight ports and fuses for each of these power ports, which is great. It has an ESP32, it's a nice breakout board. I just like mapped this into Fusion to be able to design a case easier. And from there, we designed this very, very simple case that just mounts the board, has these cable guides for the incoming cables, has an ethernet port exposed that we just pipe through and has like a lid that we put over it so it becomes mostly watertight. And then you have some hash that you take them off. Put this here, that looks pretty good. Then we just have to build the last box and then I think we're 
Just about done, actually. You get some cable. What do you want? I want the cable enough to go from here to here. And like, imagine that this is already here, so we don't need too much, actually. Because like, at this point we don't need to really care about cobble spill anymore. You don't need some extra for good measure, so to speak. Oof. Probably better we get them fucking all beat them. So I've heard that you need, you know how to open a labyrinth. Yes. That's good. But the important thing to do before they open the labyrinth is you need clean lines. Yes. We plug in for the first time. And uh, the cost is that they have two different heights. You can just dip and set them up. What? This is where I realized that they cut the boards all wrong, which is why the measurements where I was building this board didn't match up. I was struggling all the time to figure out, like in the 3D model, you know, like this was supposed to be one centimeter from this one, but it didn't add up from the top and I couldn't figure it out. And it's because they cut the board slanted. So it was like an eureka moment, but it also sucked to just figure this out after all the work. Men vi kollar inte på det här med oss. Ah, det är ingen som märker. Det är ju för jävligt, vi har gjort allt det jobbet och det stämmer ju inte ens. Det ser för jävligt ut. Det ser ju koko ut. Men det ska jag. Det är ingen som kommer märka om det här är överst. At this point in time, because we were leaving the day after, there was really nothing to do at this point. We just had to put it together and just hope that from like the right angle you wouldn't notice it. Hey, top. Do you want to continue? Like a glove. We're finally done. Not everything turned out perfect, I'll say that. Apparently the, the cutting they made at the, uh, the wood shop, they missed. <laughs> Half a centimeter, so it's not perfect, and the T is a bit high. But apart from that, it looks absolutely ridiculously awesome. Um, we're just running like a test pattern right now, but it, yeah, it's it's great. It's gonna look great when we're done with this. But it's a jet looking that it's doing just. Det är två lådor vi inte hade med oss förra året kan jag ju mela. Göran Persson! Goodbye Göran! Ska jag kvart? Vill du göra de honors? So after packing all of these things up, the only thing remaining was going down to Germany. But that's another 25 minute video, so I'm gonna upload a separate video for that. So please subscribe if you're interested in this. But for now, we're just gonna skip all the way to Germany and see how it turned out. We're trying to measure this, and it's going absolutely terrible. That looks perfect. That looks like Measure once. Drill twice. <laughs> Very well, yeah. <laughs> when you party good, you party very well, so to say. Very well, so to say. <laughs>